Hi, I'm Angel Dhanurani from Database Security Product Management and I'm excited to talk about a great new feature we have introduced in Oracle Database 23 AI, the SQL Firewall. SQL injection attacks and compromised accounts are the two most common database attack techniques used by adversaries to gain full access to sensitive data stored in the databases. SQL Firewall is a new way to combat such risk. Traditional approaches to SQL injection just aren't working. Web application firewalls rely on signatures, meaning defense is always a step behind the attackers. Teaching developers to write better code can only go so far and does nothing to secure existing applications. A smarter approach to block SQL injection attacks is to filter database commands before the database processes them. That's always been the approach of the database firewall, but protection is even more efficient if we move this protection into the database, avoiding the complexities of routing database traffic through a separate firewall. And that's what we have done with Oracle SQL Firewall. SQL Firewall is built into the Oracle Database 23 AI kernel. It relies on allow listing authorized SQL statements and associated trusted database connections. It inspects all incoming SQL statements and logs of block SQL statements and connections that are not in its allow list. SQL Firewall ensures that only explicitly authorized SQL is executed. SQL Firewall administrators can use DataSafe to collect SQL activities of application accounts, monitor the progress of the collection, create and deploy SQL Firewall policies with allow list rules, and collect, monitor, and alert on SQL Firewall violations. If you don't wish to use DataSafe, you can use the PL SQL interface. One big advantage of DataSafe is that it gives you a consolidated view of SQL Firewall violations across all your databases. Now, let me give you a brief demonstration of how you can manage SQL Firewall from the DataSafe console. As an administrator, you enable the SQL Firewall for the database. Next, you create a SQL collection, which captures the normal SQL statements of the application account you wish to protect along with the context information for the trusted database connections of that account. Now run the expected application workload from the expected database connection paths and let SQL Firewall capture the activity. I've used HR web application for this demo to protect the HR application service account. Monitor the SQL collection until you see there are no newer incoming SQL statements or trusted connection paths. Once you see newer activity drop to zero, stop the collection, generate firewall policy and deploy it to the target. You can enforce the checks for database connection paths, SQL statements or both. You can tell SQL firewall to observe and allow the SQL traffic to the database while logging any violations or block it from proceeding to the database. You may choose to audit SQL firewall violations to enable alerts. Now that the firewall policy protecting our application account is enabled, let's assume a malicious user who has stolen the HR application's service account credential and tries to connect to the database using SQL Developer, which is not the normal application server program. This connection doesn't meet the allow list conditions for how the application should connect to the database and generates a SQL firewall violation. Because we enabled auditing of violations and associated an alert policy, the security team now receives a context violation alert, letting them know that someone has attempted to gain access by improperly using the HR application credentials. You can further analyze the context violation to spot abnormal access trends over time and across your database fleet. You can drill down into the violation reports for more details and take appropriate actions. Now let's examine how SQL Firewall could have blocked such improper connection, enforcing allowed SQL and access pattern, which is our second use case. With the suspicious activity in mind, the administrator enables the SQL Firewall in blocking mode to disallow any unauthorized attempts. 
The attacker makes a second attempt using SQL Developer with stolen credentials. This time, the attack is blocked and again the administrator receives the context violation alert with information about the blocked action. Now let's see how the SQL firewall can combat the risk of SQL injection. Our attacker attempts to insert a malicious query into a field of our HR application. This application is not very well written and does not block the attack at the application layer passing the malicious statement onto the database. But even though the application passed the SQL statement to the database, the database does not execute it. The attempt is blocked by the SQL firewall because the malicious statement is not in the allowed list. And of course, you can further analyze the SQL violation in the dashboard and reports to spot abnormal activity over time and across your database fleet. You've seen how SQL Firewall can block and alert on potential SQL injection attacks and anomalous access, thereby enforcing allowed SQL and access patterns to the database. You can learn more about the SQL Firewall using these resources. Also, look out for the upcoming Database Security Office Hours session where we will talk in depth about SQL Firewall. Thank you.